but the fourth wheel I call mistaken goals. And the mistaken goals are based on the work of a guy named Alfred Adler. He lived about the time that Freud did. He was way, 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 way before his time though in his thinking. And he believed that children that are misbehaving are discouraged and it's our job to encourage them. If you looked at my self-esteem piece, you know the importance of encouraging children, encouragement rather than praise. So he said, okay, think about this one wheel. This wheel has four, four spokes. The first one is undue attention. When your child's going, mommy, 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 and you just want to flick them off you, okay? <laughs> what is their belief? Alfred Adler got inside your kid's head better than anybody else I've seen and he was able to say hey your child has the belief that at that moment they don't belong and they don't count unless they're getting personal attention from you. Now is that your belief? <laughs> no that's not your belief but that's their belief. And so what do you do? How do you handle it? Involve them. Get down on their level. Look at them in their eyes. Use your voice. Calm your voice. Get down look at them, involve them. Okay, the second one is power. Power is, you know, how many of your kids kind of boss you around? <laughs> they get kind of, you stand over, you do this, you, and they kind of are bossing you around. And they have the belief that they don't belong or count unless they're in charge and you can't make them. Well, that's an accurate, uh, that's actually kind of an accurate belief. So how do you handle it? How do you handle a child that is showing you misbehavior because of power? Choice. Choice empowers children. So I try to give kids choices all the time. Unless it's a, like, if it's a legitimate, let's say a child's hungry or tired, are you going to give them choices? No. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Just get them to bed. Okay? If a child is not hungry, overtired, pushed to the limit, and you want them to do something, I use two techniques. The first is the five minute warning. I never, ever, ever transition a child from one activity to another activity without giving them a five minute warning. Now they don't know time. But you say, hey, in five minutes, in five minutes, it's time to get ready for bed. Well, they don't want to get ready for bed. They're having fun. You're raining on their parade. In five minutes, it's time to get ready for bed. Uh, okay, well, you know, all feelings are okay. Then, in order to enlist cooperation. Now, I'm trying to enlist that. That's, that doesn't guarantee it's going to happen, but in order for me to enlist cooperation, I'm going to use a technique called two positive choices. Hey, do you want to get your jammies on first or do you want to brush your teeth first? What would work best for you? Then you have to wait. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, because children see in pictures. They actually have to form a picture in their head. And you might be seeing them going, uh, yeah. They have to make a picture of brushing their teeth, make a picture of getting their jammies on, and then they have to decide which is better for them. Remember, two positive choices. Would you like to brush your teeth first or get your jammies on first? What would work better for you? In five minutes, it's time to get in the car to go to school. Would you like to gallop like a horse or would you like to hop like a bunny? Sometimes you'll see them going like testing it out. What would work best for you? Again, two positive choices. I was actually training a student teacher one time and I said, okay, uh, line the kids up. And she goes, please line up. And of course the kids don't do anything. And I said, well, okay, watch me. Ready? In five minutes, it's time to line up. Line up. Boom. They all line up, except for one kid. One kid wasn't gonna line up. So I'm kind of watching her to see what she's gonna do. She doesn't know what to do, the kid's not gonna line up. And I said, try two positive choices. So she goes over to the kids and she says, do you wanna line up or do you wanna go to the principal's office? <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. Okay, that's a positive choice and a negative choice. That's not two positive choices. What are you gonna do? You got 25 other kids. What are you gonna do with that one kid? What are you gonna do with the 25 while you're hauling that kid to the office? I said, watch me. 
Do you want to line up at the front of the line and hold her hand, or do you want to line up at the back of the line and hold my hand? What would work best for you? Guess what he picked. Okay, so two positive choices. What would work best for you if you're having a lot of conflict? Now here's the deal with conflict. There are gonna be times when I'm gonna have a conflict with a child, there are. And I have a choice. I can either escalate that situation or I can de-escalate the situation. There are times where I will escalate a situation, but a lot of times I, I try to de-escalate it. Put your hand on your heart and say with me, my heart to your hearts. I wish you well. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and if you need more help or you'd like to schedule an appointment with me, go to my website at parenting-plus.com. You'll find my contact information and give me a call. Barb says, 